Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm taking a look at some really, really interesting official LEGO prototype pieces. These are genuine LEGO parts. They're usually used to just test out new molds or new prints on random colors, but sometimes people get a hold of them and then sell them online. I got the heads on the left from eBay many years ago now, and I just never did a video on them. And then the two minifigures and the Darth Vader helmet, I actually got from Instagram also probably around two years ago, and I've really been meaning to make a video on these for so long and just never got around to it, but here it is at long last. We're going to start out with the minifigure heads because these are the first prototype pieces I ever got. These are all superhero face prints from 2012 and 2013 sets, so all the way back to the beginning of the LEGO Superheroes line. At the top, we have Catwoman from 2012. Below her, we have Joker from 2012 as well. Then we've got Lois Lane from 2013 in the Man of Steel sets. And at the bottom, we have Nick Fury, also from 2013. So like I said, these prints, I believe, are sometimes tested on heads of different colors, so that's why Catwoman and Lois Lane are on yellow minifigures, which would be great for yellow minifigure purists. I am not one of them. I like the licensed skin colors. But if you like Lego, ye yellow Lego minifigures, sorry, um, you could try to get these face prints and then make yellow versions of your favorite superhero characters. Joker is printed onto an olive green head, which is really, really strange. That's not really useful for anything. It's just kind of cool to see. But what I like the best is the Nick Fury head, and that's because Nick Fury is actually white in the main Marvel Comics universe. Marvel used Samuel L. Jackson's likeness for a version of Nick Fury in another comic book universe, and the deal was that if they ever made a movie with Nick Fury in it, then Samuel L. Jackson would play the character. And if you're a fan of the MCU, you know that Samuel L. Jackson is now the longest running actor in that franchise because he's been doing it for like 15 years. But if you want to make a Nick Fury from the main Marvel Comics universe, you could just try to get one of these prototype face prints. And I think that that's kind of cool. I love Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury, and he's the only Nick Fury for me because I'm not a big comic fan. But I just think it's neat that, you know, you could get a prototype head like this and then make a completely different universe version of a character that we already know and love. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Darth Vader helmet. This is a genuine Lego Darth Vader helmet, the 2014 two-part mold in dark green. I really like the color green. I don't really like Darth Vader. I just got this piece because I thought it was weird and interesting, and it is weird and interesting. I think that it is pretty cool. Um, I did just stick Catwoman's head in there just so that I had something, some way to keep it stable. But yeah, this is genuine Lego. It is the exact same two-part mold that they've used. And you can, oh sorry, okay, not on that piece. You can't see the copyright on there, but you can see it on the inside of the helmet. So give me one second. Okay, so with Catwoman's head out, if I angle this properly so it catches the light, please, you can just barely see the copyright right down in the middle. Um, Sorry, it's like, it's pretty hard to get it to focus, but it is there. And like I said, if I tilt it at just the right angle, you can see it, but it's easier to see on the other minifigure prototypes. So let's go ahead and take a look at them next. Here we have a fully glow-in-the-dark minifigure, head-to-toe. This is something that LEGO has never officially released before, but this is just so, so cool to me. We have a really cool, just plain glow-in-the-dark torso with glow-in-the-dark arms and glow-in-the-dark hands, and then we do have glow-in-the-dark legs, a glow-in-the-dark head, and for some reason it's Batman. So we have a glow-in-the-dark Batman cowl. This is like the strangest glow-in-the-dark minifigure that LEGO could possibly test to me, but it's really exciting, and I am a superhero fan, so I love that I have a glow-in-the-dark Batman in my collection now. I have no idea why LEGO was testing this. We have gotten, like, some pretty good glow-in-the-dark minifigures before, and, like, nearly headless Nick from Harry Potter. But, again, I don't know if every piece on him was glow-in-the-dark. I can't remember. Actually, maybe it was. Um, but regardless, this is from before that minifigure even came out. I just, again, I didn't review it in time. Um, but yeah, I think that overall it's really interesting, but the Batman cowl is what totally makes it for me. That, um, that's like the main reason that I got this one. And again, if I tilt this up, you should be able to see the copyright right there in the middle. Actually, a better place to find the copyright on this one is on the inside of the feet, because it is on the inside of the feet of every Lego minifigure. And yeah, if I tilt that up, again, sorry, my camera is not the best, but you can see that there is writing on the inside and there is the copyright right inside that foot. 
Um, so I hope you guys can pause it and read it. But yeah, they are genuine Lego pieces. And now I'm going to show you guys how this thing glows in the dark because I'm really excited to test that out. Okay, so I do have my usual UV flashlight. So let's go ahead and really charge this thing up. You can already see how much it's glowing. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the studio lights. And holy cow, that is a ton of glow. That is so, so cool. This is like, it's like one of the coolest Lego minifigures I've ever seen. It is just awesome how much this thing is glowing. And finally, we have one more really cool superhero prototype minifigure. This is a completely transparent Hawkman. This is just absolutely insane to me. We've never seen a fully transparent Lego minifigure ever because I think there's a lot of restrictions on the pieces. And I mean, the, the transparent plastic is more brittle than regular ABS plastic. So I think it is more prone to breaking. So it makes sense why Lego's never done a fully transparent minifigure, but I love that they're thinking about it. This thing just looks so cool. And the yellow is a fitting color for Hawkman. I want to go ahead and start to look at some of the parts, so I am going to remove his helmet, but this helmet is just epic. And there you go, there is a very clear copyright. Because this piece is transparent, you can make it out a lot better than on the other pieces, but yeah, that is perfect and proves that it's genuine Lego. And yeah, it's just, it's insane to see like the insides of a Lego minifigure, you know, like you can see the joints moving, you can even see the leg joints stretching right up into the torso. This thing is just absolutely crazy. And once again, there is more copyright on the feet and much more clearly visible than on the other figures. So yeah, I think that this is really cool. I'm not really feeling any kind of like tension in the joints. I want to put his helmet back on because I think that he looks better with it. Um, but yeah, so I mean, maybe it wouldn't stand up to repeated play. But as it is, I think that it's working okay. And I just think that this is a really, really cool idea to do a fully transparent Lego minifigure. And I hope it's something that they explore in the future because I don't want my Hawkman to be lonely. I would love to have other transparent minifigures to pair with him. So there we have it. That was a quick look at some really cool prototype Lego pieces. Let me know what you guys' favorite was in the comments down below. My favorite is definitely the two minifigures. Like I love the glow in the dark. I love the fully transparent pieces. I'm a big fan of those, and because they're superheroes, I just like them even more. Honestly, I want to get more prototype LEGO pieces. They can be expensive. I bought relatively cheap ones. Like I said, it's been years, so I'm not really sure how much I paid for these pieces. But the heads, I think, cost me something like maybe $30 for all four. Um, and then I think the minifigures might have cost me like $40 to $50 each. I'm not really sure. But there are some really expensive prototype pieces out there on the aftermarket. And those are the kinds of things I wouldn't really pick up, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for other cheap but cool ones like these in the future. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and check out my website, goldenninja3000.com, and I'll see you guys in more videos soon. Bye for now.